Now in this video, the selection tool we're going to look at is called the Magnetic Lasso. One of my personal favorite tools. Um, what it does is that it looks at the edge of the selection, so you want something that has a very defined edge, and you choose the magnetic lasso where the three lasso tools are, it's the last one, and then you click on the edge, and the computer sees that difference from edge to background, and then you drag it along the edge, and it'll make that selection along the edge periodically, click to give it what we call an anchor point. It tells the computer that this is also still part of the edge that you are defining. When I come down to the hands, I don't try to get in between every finger. I go around it, and later on I can clean that up with an eraser tool easy enough. Now you'll see the line along the bottom of the pants. That's telling me that the computer is acknowledging where the edge is. Now I had some problems here. It had closed up on me uh, prematurely and didn't get her entire head and so I used the add to option. It still took some doing it and this is part of not having the best internet. This is a tool to work on very slowly around the object. Um, unless you happen to have better internet than we tend to, to have here. So keep that in mind. I now have her selected. Okay, I'm going to open up the environment or the background I want to put her into. And there it is. And so this is what I'm going to put my selection into. So I'll go back and then I've told the computer this is what I want. I will copy it. I will move to the next image after it does its image analysis. And then I paste it. Now you're often going to run into this as a problem as well, is that the images don't aren't sized for each other and you'll see that she is much larger than this image and so I need to free transform her now even with that the bounding box is outside of where I can see so I've got to even zoom out further and go back to the free transform and then I finally see the size of the box, so it's, she's quite a bit larger. So this might happen to you. And I'm going to zoom out even more, make sure I can get all of the bounding box, edit, free transform, and I hold the shift button so it stays in what we call the same aspect ratio. It means that it won't get narrower or wider, it will keep the same size. And then I drop her into the lava. Okay? So, I like the beginning of this. I think it's a fun image. I think it fits very well. Her legs look like they're disappearing in there. Now, what I would normally do, I'm not going to do it now because of time, I would go in, zoom in, and erase around her fingers those spots where the background came with it. Now, I want to go from good to great. So I'm going to add some smoke in here as well to add another type of effect and a feel. It also has the benefit of hiding that connection between the legs and the lava a little bit. So it kind of fuzzes that out and it helps mask some of that. I found a .png file. Now PNG files have what we call an alpha channel or a transparency channel. 
so that it has a transparent background so I can bring it in and place it over her without it looking like anything but smoke. Now, I want to make sure some of the smoke is covering up that area where she's going into the lava, but not also to cover it completely. Now, I had another PNG file, and this is important to notice. When I bring it in, while it's called PNG, it doesn't have a transparency layer, so this won't work for us. I wanted you to see the difference between a true PNG with a transparency and then the one without. This still image that I'll share with you for the project actually has three different smoke layers. Two of them are the same, the third is different. So there's two that are in front of her and one that is behind her. So it's a little bit different than what I did here. So take a look at that and notice how I use a smoke to go from a good image to a great image.